but I will try to explain as we go. If you want to come and watch on the side, that is fine. You don't need to sit there. You can come and watch on the side or wherever it is easier to watch. So this is half of a coconut, or some of it has already been scraped. And what you do is you uh, split the coconut into two, and I have been given some advice on how best to split it into two, and I'm going to try that over the next few weeks and maybe reward the person who gave me the tip um, by making something from coconut. <laughs> so, um, you press the coconut against the scraper head. So there has to be a little bit of axial force there. And then you turn this handle. You, you can come and watch from the side, as I said. So when you turn this handle, the direction of the force induced depends on where you actually press the coconut on the blade. So if I pull the handle towards me, and the coconut is making contact with the blade at the top. So, there is the blade contacting the coconut, and I'm going to pull the handle towards me. Okay, so I'm pulling the handle this way, and what is happening is the torque due to the force on the handle is being resisted by the coconut. Okay, but the coconut is not being very successful in resisting, so it's being scraped. But we assume that it is in static equilibrium, neglecting the inertial acceleration effects. So this torque is being balanced by the torque on the other side. So if I am turning it in anti-clockwise direction for you guys, and for you it will look like it's clockwise, then the resisting torque from the coconut should be in the opposite direction. So the force from the coconut is now being exerted towards me, and I am pulling but the coconut is also pushing it towards me. So the force there, horizontal force there, and the horizontal force there, they are both acting towards me. Now, there will be bearing reactions there and there. If you take moments about the axis, if you look from that side or that <coughs> side, these bearing forces will go through the center, through the axis, and if you take moment about the axis, it will not have any moment. But the handle force will have a moment, a torque, which will be equal to the force, the handle force I've given as 25 Newton, times this lever arm, the distance from the center of the handle to the center of the axis, okay, so that distance. So that's the torque, and the balancing torque would be equal to the scraping force coming from the coconut, which acts, you can assume, somewhere there. Um, in the failed coconut scraper, which you will analyze in the lab. It's a hemi, sorry, semicircular blade, and you can assume that the force is acting at the center of that. So here it will be somewhere there. Depends on where the contact is made. And so that force is acting towards me, and that force times the lever arm, which is a distance from the tip of the blade to the center of the axis. So they must be <coughs> equal and opposite. So from that, you can calculate the force on the periphery, the tangential force. Okay, so it's simply balancing the torques about there, and the contribution from the reactions will go away because they will have no torques about that axis. And if you press a coconut at the bottom, and if you turn it again in the same direction, now you see the resisting force from the coconut is in the opposite direction. The torque must still be countering my torque, so the anti-clockwise torque is being balanced by a clockwise torque there, but the force is being induced at the bottom in the opposite direction. So I have a force coming towards me, and here at the coconut, the blade, the force is in the opposite direction. So depending on where the coconut is being cut, the induced reaction there could be either towards me or away from me, while the handle force here is towards me. Okay. Now, if you take another scenario and press the coconut at the side there, now, if I pull it towards me, you see the coconut is pushing it down in the vertical direction. So I have a horizontal force, and here there is a vertical force. So there are different scenarios. If you look from the top, the bearing reactions in this case is occurring there and there. 
Okay, inside that there's a shaft, there are two rows of ball bearings, but the specimen you see in the lab, it does not have any bearings. And you will see it has already failed, and the reason will be obvious when you see it. So, to calculate the bearing reactions, what we do is, we draw a free body diagram. Look from the top, there's a force there, known force, there's a force there which you would have calculated already by torque balance, and on top of that there are two reactions. So you take moments about one of the bearings, you can find the reaction at the other. Then if you take moment about that one, you can find the reaction there or some of the forces horizontally. So you will be able to find the bearing reactions, in this case horizontally. And you can do the same whether it, the force there is that way or that way. Magnitude will be the same, but the direction is different and accordingly the forces induced will also be different. But when the force acts at the coconut cutting head in the vertical direction, there are two views which you should look at. When you look from the top, only this force is going to contribute to moment. The handle force there will be balanced by two horizontal reactions at the bearings, and you can find those by looking at the equilibrium. So there's one known force and two unknown horizontal reactions. But if you look from the side, you will see a vertical force there, and a vertical reaction there and there. Of course, this is not going to come into picture now. So you can take a moment about one of the supports, and you can find the vertical reaction there. So there's a known force there, unknown vertical reaction, unknown vertical reaction. So mind you, both vertical reaction there and there, and the horizontal reaction there and there, are taking place simultaneously. So once you find the vertical and horizontal components by using Pythagoras, you can find the resultant bearing forces. Okay? And what you do with those is you find the bearing stress. And you will find, if you use the normal formula that we supply to you, you will find that the reaction, the bearing stress you calculate would be quite reasonable and uh, it shouldn't have caused failure. But you will have to figure out why it failed. You will actually know that it has failed in bearing, but you have to figure out why it failed. So it is not something that you can easily learn from textbooks, but it is an uh, interesting example for you to study. So remember, first look at the torque balance. So draw a free body diagram looking that way, an unknown force there, a known handle force there, 25 Newton. Look at the equilibrium. Uh, you need that distance and that distance. And unknown reactions there don't contribute anything. You can find the force there. And then look at the free body diagrams, plan view and side view, and you will be able to calculate the bearing reactions for the different scenarios. And you can calculate the bearing stress I would also suggest you check the bending stress in the stem. This is not the actual specimen. Um, and you will find that the bending stress would be reasonable. There's also some axial stress, which would be small compared to the bending stress. But you can look at the combination of the axial compressive stress and the compressive stress due to bending moment. And that would still be reasonable. So this is how it goes. I, I'm not sure whether it's a good idea for health and safety reasons to let you eat it, uh, but if you ever want to try it at home, this is another thing that you can do. Thank you.